I'm going to go ahead and loop through all of the properties and methods that are in my object. So down here I've got my object and it's got two properties and one method. So I'm going to use a for in loop and what's set up in here is a variable with the name k and this is going to act as a representative of the key for that property or method. So on each pass it's going through each key in turn. So on the first pass here k will equal key string then on the next pass k will equal key number and then on the next pass k will equal a method. Down here inside the body it's going to display a pop-up with the key name and then it's going to be followed by a colon to emulate the naming scheme up here and then it's going to use bracket notation to access that keys value or that properties value. I demonstrated bracket notation in another video to be able to access the values of a property in the object. However, it would look something more like this. So if I have my object and then using bracket notation, it would look like that. But you would reference the actual key name, so it would be something like key string. And so if I alerted that out, it would go ahead and give me the value in key string. Here though, is one of the other advantages of bracket notation and that is that you can get the value of a property um, dynamically so that's what is set up right here with this k this k is representing uh, the property so what I can do here is I can say my object and then in bracket notation k and that'll look inside my object and it'll return uh, the value in this instance. So then what this will display is the key name and then also the value for that property. I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to go ahead and run this. And it displays right here the key name and then the value. So it's going to go through all three of those. See key number 10 and then the method here what it displays is going to be the literal type out of the function. So that our note to here is that this will still work if I don't have the semicolon there so I'll run it and it'll still work. Now I can extend this foreign to also do a check to check if the property that it's pulling is unique to that object. And so I would do something like this. So if my object, and using the has own property that I demonstrated in another video, alert out again the K and using bracket notation go ahead and pull that value for that property and end it with a semicolon. So let's just go ahead and check to see if that's the case and if it is um, then go ahead and uh, display them in a pop-up so when I run this we'll get the same result except this time it's got a check in there as well.